Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill Williams coming from Atlanta, Georgia, live on the Influencers Podcast. We're ready to rock and roll on a, a Friday morning here in Georgia. I want to introduce to you a good buddy, a good friend from way out in the Northwest United States. We're talking to the president of Acceleron Software, Mr. Shane Marzola. So come on in and grace our screen and Say hello to my audience all around the world today. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been looking forward to talking with you. I just got back from my uh, sojourn over in uh, Italy and uh, the Netherlands. And so back to work in the good old USA so we could share a lot about what you're doing. And we're very curious. So I want you to start off with asking you, where were you? What happened? And who are you surrounded by that inspired you to do what you're doing today? So basically a life story in a short 50,000 foot view. Yeah. There you go. All right. So I was born in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in the late 60s, uh, raised uh, mainly in a blue collar house. My dad had his own construction company. Mom was a nurse. Uh, my school district was divided. These things actually have an effect. Um Blue collar people on one side, white collar people on the other, primarily. And uh, you didn't meet each other until junior high. Um, that was interesting because once I sort of met the white collar world, um, it really started to form some views of where I wanted to go in my life. I went to Drexel University in Philadelphia, ended up with a business degree that had an engineering and marketing minor sort of little unique. The other unique thing is that Drexel had a cooperative education program, still has. And my last co-op, I went with a tech startup. Um, these things are not, you know, they weren't even that popular in Silicon Valley in the late 1980s, let alone the suburbs of Philly. Um, but it was awesome. I traveled around the world. Um, at age 20, starting at age 20, opening up distribution channels for uh, various international markets for the company. That was really amazing. Um, then I went on to start my own tech startup. Uh, I guess first for me, I was 26 when I did that. So pretty young, I'm 56 or soon will be 56. So that's 30 years of, of entrepreneurial uh, experience. I um, Moved to Silicon Valley in 1999 because my first tech startup was a semiconductor company. And that was really the place to be um, for business, for that business. I traveled about two million air miles around the world, mostly Asia, but some Europe as well. Um, that was uh, really helpful in forming a lot of my base um, experience. Uh, along the way, I surrounded myself by some uh, amazing mentors, really, really amazing. And they helped me form my business style, my corporate culture style, and uh, in general, kept a rudder on my on my proverbial ship. I think the inflection point for my business uh, life, absolutely, that startup as a co-op um, out of Drexel University. And I, I'm still friends with the CEO and the VP of sales there, uh, still keep in touch with them, not, you know, every month or anything like that, but uh, we definitely connect here and there, and uh, I just really value the the experience that they that they gave me. Sean, you're obviously a very successful businessman. You've started things that proved to be successful. I'll bet you there was something in your life that didn't work out. So let's come down to earth <laughs> and show the people how real you are. Tell us what your greatest failure story was, what you learned, and how did you recover from it? So in business, specifically entrepreneurial endeavors, um, I definitely am always, when I'm mentoring other entrepreneurs or fellow entrepreneurs, I'm always making sure everyone knows you learn way more from your failures than you do your mistakes. So embrace that when it happens. Not saying you want to wish it to happen, but it it, it, it does happen. And so the three for me... Um, I think first, don't don't fall in love with yourself. Um, check your ego. Uh, it, it, this is a slippery slope, though, because while you may be doing things um, 
that are really special, you are probably are going to do that for a limited time. Nothing lasts forever. So check your ego. Uh, two, even if, so you're going to have co-founders probably, and, and you're going to be loyal to them. Um, however, you cannot allow, you cannot allow co-founders even to be skating, to not being accountable, to not performing, to not in, be impacting the business. You just can't do it. Um, and, and you need to not be delayed in how you handle that. And it's possible that you, you need to move on from them, um, in your business. Um, and that's a tough one, but it's really important. And the last one is, is fear of pivot. Don't be afraid to pivot. Um, there are sometimes like my very first company that I started, I, it was a hardware company. And we were building a piece of hardware. In doing that, we built a custom chip to make it work. Well, it turns out that that custom chip we made was the bigger market opportunity than the actual piece of hardware. This was a massive pivot, though, because I'd already raised some capital based on being a hardware company. So um, luckily, I was young and um, not afraid. Uh, so I just did it. But that was a tough one. That was a tough one. That's sage advice, and I think our listeners can identify quite nicely with some of that. I know in my uh, business career, we had to jettison some uh, founders, co-founders from some of our teaching groups that we had and improve our stock, as you say, to to meet the current needs. You know, you can't stay with the things you started with in times when you get out of date. Yeah, it happens uh, on occasion. I like what you're saying. Tell me what motivates you, Sean, to uh, keep going after success, after success, after success. Well, uh, I think I think if you're built like an entrepreneur, you want to keep being an entrepreneur. So it, I think you could say it becomes a bit addictive. Um, it is also exhausting. So mm -hmm. you, you do, you do want to sort of throttle that a bit, but it, you, you get to pick opportunities a little bit easier mm -hmm. as you, as you age and, and have more experience and you also get to juggle more things. So you can do multiple ventures at one time. Um, and for some of us, that's actually better for our productivity than focusing on just one thing. And that sort of smacks against the norm. Um, and also the norm is what is taught. But, you know, entrepreneurs are a special class. I mean, it's it's sort of hard for me to say that out loud because it, it sounds like boasting, but it, it is. It's a special class of people. Not everybody is built for that. And in, in that, entrepreneurs are often built with a little bit of, I hate to use a cliche, but a little bit of ADD. Um, and for us, it's a little bit better that we have variety than, um, than just one thing. One thing can be very boring, um, to an entrepreneur, just the way they're built. Uh, that said, when it's time to focus, you got to focus. And so, you know, it, it sounds like I'm almost being contrarian, but, uh, the entrepreneurs in the audience will understand what I mean for sure. And, and those who aren't, what I, what I would say is you can't put an entrepreneur in a box. Um, you got to set them free um, and let them do what they do. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy for non-entrepreneurs to, <laughs> to deal with, but that's how they operate. And um, that's why I love, I love just being involved in doing, you know, new things. It's also fun to be involved in, in things you haven't done before, right? Like a, a lot of people get into a career and they're in that same career for a really long time. You know, while I've been in technology primarily, you know, I've had, I've had some success in semiconductors um, software, uh, solar, you know, and I, and I, and not just like in software, not just one kind of software. It's, it's at this point, it's probably three, four, five times but, or different kinds. So that variety really helps. I think the entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. You're really uh, speaking to me when you say your ADD strikes you that you've got to do something <laughs> different periodically because I found out real quickly as a dentist that I didn't want to do fillings and crowns all day. So I 
earnestly applied myself and learned orthodontics and TMJ and oral surgery and implants and lasers. And, you know, then I got tired of teaching didactic clinical techniques and I started marketing management, speaking all around on that topic. And you really don't ever get satisfied until you, you just keep going until you find that niche that's perfect. And, uh, I'm still looking for that perfect niche, even though <laughs> I'm a 73 and I still feel like I can do 20 more years. Well, I would never guess you're 73. Um, but that's a, that's a really great example, right? Cause most people would think a dentist is just this very like straight vertical. Don't go outside the lines, but you went way outside the lines with all the different things that you picked up. Oh, Sean, time. you don't even know. No. <laughs> that's I awesome. was, I was hunting for gold in the Philippines, uh, treasure in, in uh, Bali, Indonesia. I was trying to drill oil in Kazakhstan. Oh, I love this. I traveled all over South America and Europe trying to set up a multi-level marketing company for a few years. So I did a lot of things besides staying a dentist. That's awesome. It's fun, you know. And I say I have a 10-year attention span. And when I commit to do something that's easily for 10 years, but you give me 15 in one thing and I'm usually burned out and I've got to try something new. So I feel I for you. I know where you are. I understand that. That's great. Now tell, tell me about Acceleron and um, what is your company motto? What do y'all do? Well, we're a one-stop shop for the small to medium sized business. We often refer to that as the SMB. Um, ultimately we, we are a software company, but you can come to us and we can help you figure out your liability insurance. We can help you figure out cash flow. Um, it's possible that you're struggling with recruiting. Um, maybe you need some business coaching. Maybe you want to put your business on a track to be acquired because you don't have a succession plan within your uh, organization or your family. Um, so we can help you with all those things since we're seasoned, uh, entrepreneurs and business folks. Um, there's really not much that we haven't tackled. Again, we're a software company and ultimately we're selling software at some point. Um, but we're here to help the, the small to medium sized business and really fits into three buckets. Do you, you know, increase your revenue, decrease your costs or improve your operational efficiencies somewhere in there or all three, we're, we're going to help you and we're going to impact your, your company. Yeah, I studied under Brad Sugars and five point business chassis, exactly what you just explained. If you increase the funnel and things going through it and get better conversions, have better price points, you're going to make a success out of any company. Yes, definitely. Tell me your three success secrets. What do you uh, teach others that they can model from? Uh, let's see. Um Three success secrets. You know, I think they would be disrupt is the first one. Wherever you can disrupt. And and I don't mean to be the Tasmanian devil or the, you know, the bull in the China closet, so to speak. But it's going to be hard to make an impact in businesses as an entrepreneur if you aren't disrupting, at least in a business model or or pricing or, or some form of disruption. So I think that's the first one. Uh, the second one is, is the giving up, right? It's not an option. Um, and it, this one almost sounds like, uh, like everyone says it maybe, but the degree to which you have to be committed is like maybe nothing else you you'll ever do in your life. Um, your commitment level has to be so strong and it really sets the, the tempo and the culture of your, of your, of your business. And even if you're just two or three people, the culture matters. It matters a lot. And I would say that that commitment level is, is so critical. And then third for me was I surrounded myself by people who were better at the things I wasn't good at better than me. And a lot of egos get in the way of that sometimes. And you, you just have to reject that. That that just can't be. You got to know what you're capable of doing, what you're great at, what you know, what you, your 
impact on the business can be. And then you got to surround yourself by people who can fill in the rest and they've got to be better than you at that. Every company I've seen that does that seems to be more successful. So you, you hit three big ones. Um, we found that culture propelled us far beyond most of the dental practices in our area. And we, we maintain employees 20, 25, 30 years based on having a culture that nobody else could touch. So yeah. that's a major point, the commitment to staff and team. Yeah. Very good. I like that. Uh, tell me, why would somebody buy from Acceleron? Well, our business model is pretty special. Um, you can pay for our, our software, for example, or if you're using merchant services and buy now, pay later services, the more of those you use, you then get rebates uh, against your software costs. So you can effectively use our software for free. I like it. So you really figured out a financial model that nobody can resist. That model's really good. And, and a lot of small to medium sized businesses, for whatever reason, um, th there's a resentment of what they pay in software costs for some reason. Um, so I do think it, it hits home for, for them. And, and that is really helpful. What about your uh, ideal client? Who would that be? I think an ideal client is, is a small business that wants to improve themselves. I think it can be stated that simply. Small being one person startup or. Yeah. You know, it could be, it could be million, 10 million. really, yeah, really anything between one and 25 people. Um, if you, if you think of SMB, uh, we focus on, on lowercase, uh, S and, and capital S not so much, uh, capital M, maybe a little bit of lowercase M. So, uh, how do you reach these guys that you want to be clients? Well, certainly marketing, um, you know, outbound marketing, uh, in the form of, um, uh, whether it's digital marketing social media, uh, perhaps um, uh, advertising as well. And then um, uh, referrals are not uncommon at all for us. It's actually quite common. Um, we're also getting involved in um, Alignable, um, which is a really great platform for small businesses. There's 8 million small businesses as part of Alignable and they're growing dramatically. So we're uh, launching literally next month um, a very large scale um, involvement in Alignable. I'll have to learn more about that one. I don't know if I remember that one or not. You did mention your well-defined products and services software, and you you provide consulting also, do you? We do. We do. And it, it you know, for us, we want to be able to help the small to medium-sized business. So that's why software isn't very much in your face, if you will, when you come to our website. Um, if we can help the small business, everything else will come. So our software products are really, um, effectively, we make a, a business management system and an, um, what, what becomes an ERP um, for the small business. So um, Enterprise resource planning or ERP is something that larger companies are all have. Uh, it's something unaffordable, really, for the SMB, yet they do need it. So we don't refer to it as an ERP, but it really is um, uh, a, a system that can manage their entire business. It's unbelievably modular, so they can start small, build big. Let's say that they want to decrease in size later, that they can draw back on it. There's no penalties for that. Uh, again, very modular. And then the business model itself, I think, is is really excellent, right? So many companies are are using forms of, of payment uh, that we can monetize that they're going to use no matter what. And that can get their software costs um, down as far as zero. Do you apply other uh, people's softwares into yours and like do patch quilt work to... Uh enhance your particular services or offer people, you know, ways to plug in to what you already have? That's a great question. So uh, while we want to do as much as we can organically, and, and we have our own organic 
software as as ingredients to that overall modular recipe um there are things that don't make sense to to build uh they're much you'd much rather partner with like for example for accounting uh we've been a quickbooks integrator since 2006 um we became a quickbooks solutions provider about a year and a bit ago and so now um, not only are we integrated with quickbooks and into its payroll program uh, and their time tracker but uh, we can turn those products on and off and make them part of a package uh, from a pricing point of view. So that's a good example. Um, we recently acquired uh, the majority of a recruiting company, um, a rec uh, sorry, recruiting software uh, specifically built for the SMB. So in that case, it was a, a buy versus make or partnering, then we're probably making it, but it, it really is a, uh, I would say, a fairly intense undergoing to figure out what the right um, path is uh, for a piece of functionality within the modularity. Yeah, talking about competition, you, you mentioned your price point and the ability to get their cost down to zero if they use the other uh, financial products. What else do you do that would crush the competition? Yeah, great question as well. Uh, I don't think there's I don't think there's a software company that has all the different services that we have. I, I don't think there is one. Um, there certainly isn't one for the small to medium sized business sector. So that's probably point number one. And then point number two is that business model. It, it it gives you everything you want. If you want to just pay full price because you don't want any of the other services, that's fine. But if all those other services are attractive to you, um, and some of them you might already be paying for, so it's not a big deal. You're just switching to get a better price, then that could be attractive to you as well. So there's really, you know, I would say there's really, there's not a personality type or a philosophy type that can't get what they want um, out of Accelerant. Have you had AI to be instituted into any of your products yet? I would say not so much yet um that'll likely change um as time marches on um we're certainly using some ai internally to to be more efficient with our own business but um uh at the moment we're cautious on where we put it into software we want to see how it unfolds first are there online platforms that you're using that your company relies on to uh, to market yourself well, I, I naturally, um, some of the social media platforms like LinkedIn, right? You, you can find a lot of business people on LinkedIn, business owners, um, and here soon, Alignable. Um, again, you can't find 8 million and growing. I mean, it's, it's growing by a six figure number per month. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in it. It reminds me of what LinkedIn you know, so LinkedIn is kind of like the resume platform, if you will. Alignable, I would, I would say, is the, is the, is the business platform where, where mm -hmm. business, to, business to business communication is going on all the time. So, uh, those two platforms, I think, are going to be really, really, they're just going to grow as as time goes goes forward. All right. Let's see. Um, let's talk about five star client service and experiences. How do you deliver that? What's your secret on that? Well, there's definitely always a recipe. Um, some of the major ingredients in that recipe are, you know, your your corporate culture has to reward um, for for positive customer experience. So, right there, you know, I would call that a major ingredient in that recipe. And our our staff. I think it is another piece of that um, recipe, a major ingredient in that recipe. We, we have very little undesired turnover. Um, the majority of our, of our onboarding staff has been with us for seven or eight years. So that consistency really, really helps. Um, and then I would say the, the final major ingredient um, is probably your compensation plan. When, when staff are, are compensated for the customers being 
satisfied, when that is a direct relation, um, you can achieve uh, better results. Well, compensation keeps people happy and you got happy people. They do a good job and express that to cu customers. So I and think they that, stick around. Yeah, it's a full circle, you know, it is. How do you turn these uh, really happy clients into brand ambassadors for you? Yeah, that's a good one. And I, I, I think you go the extra mile, right? You try to help. You try to be helpful um, in things, and and often in, when you're not being paid for it, right? You you're it, you don't make it so clinical. Um, small to medium sized businesses are run by people, and oftentimes those people have have both opportunities and problems in their lives, and and they'd like to shed their problems and take advantage of their opportunities. So if 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 you can be a conduit to that it's going to be really easy for them to speak highly of you. It, it won't even take any effort. You won't have to ask. Excellent. Excellent. What about today? What are you grateful for? My family. And having those staples gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, how do you start your day, Sean? What do you do to get up and get going? I, first of all, it's early. I, I start early. I take five sips of water. And then I usually make bulletproof coffee. You reminded me. There you go. Take a sip every now and then, just if you don't even need it, because it's good for yep. you, right? And bulletproof coffee, that's a winner. It is for me. I like it. What about your um, your plans? If you're if you got a goal but you don't reach it, what do you do? Well, if I'm stuck on it and I want to move forward, I, I truly believe that goal setting is, 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 is in large mental and you can manifest toward your goal. So I'm a big believer in uh, visuals and sim symbols. So from a visual point of view, um, I'm old school. I like whiteboards um, and I like them in front of me. So behind my screen here are whiteboards with my goals on them. And I, I rewrite them every first of the year, usually in various categories. Some of them are personal. Some of them are, are business. Um, and then within each of those two categories are subcategories. So Manifesting those goals and watch, seeing that physically day, day in, day out is really important. From a symbol point of view, this is a this is one I use. Um, I, I usually have a wallet on me, so I'll take a miniature version of those goals, shrink it down, and put it in my wallet. And so it's always with me. I'm constantly thinking of it. I'm constantly watching it, and it's constantly upon me. And in doing so, I'm trying to manifest what I'm trying, the, 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 um, the end result. And because I'm doing that, all my actions are even little ones during the day are leading toward those goals. I agree with that. I started back in 1981, read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, wrote down 20 goals and 19 of them came through the first year. And the 20th took another few months. So that's a good one. It's a good book. I read it too. Yeah, it's a good book. It's a great way to start your life if you haven't ever done that. It's true. I reread it a few times. And uh, every time you read it, there's something new there too. Something comes up. Yeah. Let's see. Um, you have a revenue generating idea. Does your spouse put her foot down and say, not this time, or does she let you run? <laughs> That is a complicated question. Uh, yeah, that one's complicated. So if you treat it like a business and you're in business together, even if your your significant other isn't working in your business, I think if you you first approach it like that, right, then it's you you're you're putting it forward in a respectful manner. So handling that with respect, I think, is the number one um, first step, and then. Working through, you know, if that idea works for 
the time you are at in your life uh, is the second is it's the second piece of the puzzle. And if you can if you can come to agreement then, then it's it's just acting after that. And then acting upon it, like taking action. And then once you're taking that action, it's really important to uh, be dedicated to it, right? Because then even if you fail, your um, your significant other is going to know that it wasn't because you didn't do your best. So to me, those are, I think, the three pieces of moving forward that have always worked for me. Um, and I, I do think that one's really important. It seems as though it's not always the money that's involved. It's the time. Time. And you, you have to have an ROI on your time you spend in a new endeavor as well as uh, an income generation. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you use paid digital media like the Facebooks and LinkedIn advertising? Do you do any of that where you buy ads? We do. And uh, secondary question is in a revenue sense, what percentage of revenue do you recommend others or your own company invest in paid digital media in the marketings? Well, um, so I, I would say if, I, if, if my, if my uh, VP of marketing or chief marketing officer came to me and asked me that exact question, like, what's my budget? I would say that's not an exact enough question for me. So to me, I'd like to know or need to know what is the overall marketing plan within that overall marketing plan? What is the expectation of ROI for each of those categories? And then we'll decide on what that specific digital media budget would be. So I think you have to dissect it a little further. Um, and that might be the geek in me. That might be the minor in marketing that might be just experience i don't really know i just that's the only way i can do it um i struggle to spend marketing dollars unless i'm dissecting it so that i can measure the performance in each area if i can't measure the performance in each area I'll, I'll i'll probably pass on the marketing that's the wisdom of maturity having thrown a lot of dollars into a lot of holes <laughs> you know, i know that so yeah, yeah. One of the things that uh, we have done is uh, being able to save people 80, 90 percent on their digital ad spends, getting the same or better results. So That's always, crazy. I've been interested in asking that question because I know nobody can answer it and say they love to pay out that money dollars. <laughs> they always <laughs> want to say, "Yep." Let's look at this question and think. Okay. I'm in my 50s now, but if I had to give advice to myself when I was 20 years old, what would I say? Uh, th this one is very personal. I would say don't get married until you're more established. Uh, I got married young and I started my first business young. And those things, they don't they don't mesh very well. Uh, entrepreneurial life is hard on a family. Can be. Um so I would say you need to be more established before you you go ahead and start that start that family. What if you're a 50 year old entrepreneur still waiting to find that perfect woman? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you can apply. And I did actually. Uh, <laughs> you can apply entrepreneurial uh, wisdom to your personal life. And, um, you know, I'm happily married for a second time, 18 years this September. And I. I mean, I couldn't be happier. Wonderful. Well, you speak from experience. Who is your living mentor and uh, how did they impact you? Your best mentor. I think my answer to this is going to end up being a tad unusual and possibly off-putting. <laughs> I don't have a living one. Um and I think, okay, so I, I started young and, as, and, and I had an enormous amount of amazing mentors. Often I could not afford to pay them. And in doing so, a lot of them said to me, it's okay. 
I'm giving back. I had help when I was your age. So it's your obligation to be helpful as you grow and you become a mentor. So I would say I spend more time mentoring than taking on mentorship. That doesn't mean I'm perfect or done learning. Um, but I've been doing this for 30 years here shortly. Um, I've got a birthday this weekend, in fact, and it'll be a 30 years since I've been an entrepreneur. Um, so if, if entrepreneur years are like dog years, what does that mean? I'm like 210 or something in, in, in mm -hmm. age. <laughs> well, it's hard to find people once you do that that long that can be your good mentor. And I just haven't found a, I haven't found one yet where they're, they're in my living category. Sadly, I do have some that have passed that I would, I would phrase, but it's specifically the question is living mentor. But the main point I'm trying to make is I spend more time giving back and mentoring these days than obtaining mentorship. That's, that's the wisdom again, coming out in that you've passed the gauntlet from uh, being the mentee to being the mentor. And that's, that's what we should all do as we experience life. And we look around and see all the people below us in age and we wish they knew what we knew. Yeah, it's, 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 it's true. Really? Yeah, it's really true. Tell us why do you want to be impactful, Sean? Well, I think, I think it comes down to, you know, I kind of view it as it's an honor to be put here on earth and you might as well get busy living, you know, and I think there might even, somebody might've even said that famous, you know, get busy living or get move on dying or something like that. And I, I just look at it like, it's an honor to be here. So I'm going to get after it and I want to have an impact because it's fun. It's much more fun to have an impact than to just drone on and, and, and not. And even if you don't have an impact, but you're trying to have an impact, that's even way more fun than, so I think that might come down to faith and uh, what I believe we're here to do. That'll take you to some pretty interesting places. That's for sure. Travel is one of the most uh, joyous things anyone can do because you meet the cultures, you taste the food and you see the sights that are not your norm around where you live. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered for when it's all said and done? Helping people. Helping people is nothing better. No more rewarding situation than to be a helper, to be a, a provider of good things to people. So I agree with you. What about the um, way we can support you? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I, I am actually starting a podcast for small businesses. Um, it's going to be called uh, Sensei Small Business Dojo, Guiding Grasshoppers to Success. So that's going to start next month. And uh, if you want to tune in, that'd be great. I'll be doing some shorts on YouTube and, and TikTok as well. Um, it's just going to be all about small business and helping small businesses. Tell us the name once again. Uh, small, let's see, Sensei Small Business Dojo, help Guiding Grasshoppers to Success. There's a sort of a pun there from the you know, early Kung 70s Fu. Kung Fu show. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I've used, I, I, use, I use it in my mentorship now. So. Sensei. Yeah. Now, how would you explain your guest appearance today to people? Oh, I, I've, I'm having a blast. It's so much fun to, to chat with you. Uh, I enjoy your questions. Uh, you've got a wonderful spirit about you. So, um, you know, it's, whenever you get to meet interesting people, I mean, the things that you mentioned just briefly uh, are sort of intoxicating, right? You know, here's a dentist who decided to do all these different things so far from their core um, training. Uh, that's just awesome. You don't meet everybody like that every day. So Not thanks. Everybody. Yeah, I had a plaque on my wall since the beginning. It said, dare to be different. You did it, I think. It a pack of uh, a, a bushel of green apples with one red one in the center. <laughs> so I've always enjoyed the contrarian point of view forever. Uh, I'm going to give you the final word, and then I'll come back and uh, close the show off and talk to you again in a few minutes. But uh, hey, 
give us your uh, advice or your wisdom. Well, I, I'm just a be big believer, and this is probably repetitive, but I'm a big believer in, you know, trying to impact whatever you're doing and and living living to its fullest. That doesn't mean you have to be reckless, but just trying to be, you know, give it your all. Go, go after it. Uh, don't, you know, be okay with norms. Um, norms aren't going to get you or your family anywhere. So... Uh, in addition, I'd say I really appreciate your, your audience. I really appreciate being here today. Uh, I'm sort of humbled by it. And um, for those entrepreneurs in the audience, uh, fellow entrepreneurs, I'd say, you know, keep at it. Uh, it can be really hard, but keep at it. And i um, happy to help if anybody, anybody needs it. All right. Thank you, Sean. That was an excellent summary. And I'm glad that you're able to, to join us today. It's been extremely interesting. I know our audience all around the world will be uh, sharing this, not just listening to it, but sharing it because of the wisdom displayed and the uh, advice given. I'm going to give a uh, couple of uh, testimonials here about things that you can do. People out there listening in the audience to uh, contact me, you can go to my digital business card at the OVU, and you can also take a picture of that uh, QR code, which is the same address as the OVU there, and you can reach me at the uh, place drbillwilliams.tv or my on passive addresses. I have several. I want to really make you aware of this one thing this is going to be sean you might like this for your business this track them address right here will take you to o tracker software which tracks better and more thoroughly and more simply than uh, something like google analytics mm. and for anybody and it's it's going to be extremely cost competitive far better than the cost of uh, the other products that are in that category. So save a lot. There it is. The overall way to reach me with all my data and all my podcast information, of course, is the uh, .tv, as we mentioned. And um, we'll skip that one. I don't think I want to talk about that one today. I'm looking forward to uh, keeping up with you, Sean, and seeing what your software is doing, what your life is going to turn into when you really reach your peak. I know you haven't reached it yet. I know you've been on an ascendant path. It's been fun talking with you. So thank you for being a part of the Influencers Podcast uh, mentorship today. Well, it's my, my pleasure, Dr. Williams. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm going to turn the show off now and I'll see you guys on the next broadcast soon and uh, look forward to a 